Dark Satellite. Item number, SCP-2460. Object class, Keter. See addendum 2460-B. Special Containment Procedures. Due to its position and properties, SCP-2460 is not contained at this time. Space agencies are to be informed of SCP-2460's trajectory so that satellites and launches do not collide with SCP-2460. When doing so, SCP-2460 is to be listed as a large piece of space debris. No object is allowed within 50 kilometers of SCP-2460. Any matter colliding with SCP-2460 must be reported to the Astronomical Tracking Unit at Site-195 immediately. In the event of a collision, the mass, density, and Schwarzschild radius of SCP-2460 must be remeasured and its resulting new orbital trajectory calculated. Description SCP-2460 is a gravitational anomaly in elliptical orbit around the Earth. It has an orbital period of four hours, with a furthest distance from the surface of the Earth of 12,430 kilometers, and a closest approach of 395 kilometers. Measurement of the gravitational anomaly indicates it has a mass of 1.24 by 10 to the 13th kilograms. At the location of the anomaly, there is an apparent object of approximately 50 meters by 30 meters by 15 meters. This gives the object a measured density of 5.51 by 10 to the 8th kilograms per meters cubed, which is approximately 100,000 times the density of the Earth and close to the density of a white dwarf star. The shape of this object is variable in appearance, with components of different materials appearing to erupt from the surface of the object, only to be reabsorbed. Furthermore, the object is virtually invisible to electromagnetic radiation and has no measurable charge, magnetic moment, or wave emissions. However, despite this behavior, photons in the visible light spectrum still interact with the object, albeit at a low albedo of 0.01. .01. The anomaly behaves very differently on the quantum level. SCP-2460 is comprised of bosonic matter that anomalously maintains much of the structure of fermionic, normal, matter. This anomalous construction causes the Pauli exclusion principle not to apply, allowing matter to occupy the same quantum state as other similarly composed bosonic matter. In addition, electromagnetic interaction is suppressed. As a result, the bosonic electron fields between objects in SCP-2460 do not repel each other. The net result of these anomalous quantum effects is that multiple individual objects within SCP-2460 occupy the same place at the same time. What appears to be objects growing out of and receding into SCP-2460 is actually thousands of co-locating objects oscillating about the gravitational center of the anomaly. The exceptionally high mass of SCP-2460 is the result of these thousands of individual objects occupying the same location all gravitationally bound together. It is important to note that this co-location is not a spatio-temporal distortion, but the net result of the lack of interaction between individual objects in the anomaly. There is no risk of a reversion to a Euclidean space because the space is already Euclidean. The influence of the gravitation of thousands of objects acts as a strange attractor, keeping each individual object within 105 meters of the center of SCP-2460 at all times. The chaotic nature of the attractor has caused multiple objects to be shown at the surface of SCP-2460 at different intervals. Most of the items expressed are space dust and rocky debris similar in composition to asteroids. The following items are notable, however. A planetesimal with the above dimensions of 50 meters by 30 meters by 15 meters. This item acts as the surface of SCP-2460. Of note is the distinct lack of cratering on the surface. A comet nucleus of approximately 5 meters diameter. Visible spectral analysis suggests that the object's original location was the Oort cloud, a spacefaring vessel of unknown make, 10 meters in length. The hull is covered with unidentified symbols. 
through a plate glass window, two beings are visible, apparently long deceased and desiccated, resembling crocodilian humanoids. Approximately 1,000 metric tons of hydrogen and helium compressed under gravitation into a superfluid state. 90 capsules, each containing a single humanoid occupant, each co-locating independently from the others. The occupants are apparently dead and desiccated. Foundation Probe OU-11-3 and Agent Rick Roberts, deceased. See Addendum 2460-B. Addendum 2460-A. On February 15, 2013, a stray orbiting steel bolt attached to a retaining plate from the redacted disaster was seen to be captured by the gravity well and collide with SCP-2460. It was observed that the collision caused no impact site and the bolt passed through the matter without hindrance. However, post-collision, the bolt and plate no longer registered any electromagnetic field deformation. Further observation demonstrated that the bolt remains attached to the plate confirming that the collocation effect of items caught within the anomaly does not extend to items that are exposed within milliseconds to it. This observation further suggests that all the objects seen in SCP-2460 were, at one time, normal fermionic matter, transformed by the anomaly into the presently seen amalgamation. It is hypothesized that the anomaly annihilates the quantum spin of the subatomic particles, transforming the matter from fermionic to bosonic and allowing it to collocate. Containment procedures updated to prevent further matter collisions with SCP-2460. Further testing is suggested. Addendum 2460-B. On February 5th, 2014, SCP-2460 was noted to pass within 70 kilometers of Foundation Orbital Unit 11, and a sortie was authorized to intercept the anomaly for quantum measurements. Agent Rick Roberts was sent in probe OU-11-3 to examine the anomaly at close range for testing of the quantum signature of the matter within the object. Radio contact with probe OU-11-3 ceased when the probe came within 5 kilometers of the central mass. Approximately 0.5 seconds before loss of contact, apparent density of the low Earth orbit medium seemed to increase from 1.0 by 10 to the negative 11th kilograms per meters cubed to 7.3 by 10 to the negative 9th kilograms per meters cubed. All remaining data from the experiment comes from the cameras aboard Orbital Unit 11. Agent Roberts quickly noted the lack of radio contact and engaged thrusters to maneuver away from SCP-2460. The fuel was seen to ignite and pass ineffectually through the hole and cabin of Probe OU-11-3. Unable to adjust position or trajectory, Probe OU-11-3 was gravitationally captured by SCP-2460 and fell into the central mass. 15,534 kilograms added to the mass of SCP-2460. Trajectory and Schwarzschild radius recalculated. Containment procedures updated to include a mandatory distance of 50 kilometers. Addendum 2460-C, transcript of lecture regarding SCP-2460 on April 3rd, 2015. Presenter, Dr. Cordelia Argent, Principal Researcher, Astronomical Phenomena Division. Forward, Dr. C. Argent presents the results of her observations and experiments with SCP-2460. Begin log, Dr. C. Argent. Good evening and welcome. I want to thank everyone for coming this evening. Tonight, I'm going to explain what, exactly, SCP-2460 is, and the risk it represents for the Earth. I could explain the fermion to boson conversion, called quantum spin annihilation, explain how this interaction is possible under a version of supersymmetry, the transformation of quarks to squarks and so on, but I'm sure that would go over most of your heads. You could learn it all, but you're here to understand what this is, and what it means. I'll spare you the physics. I'm sure you've heard stories of walking through walls, ghosts, radio waves, certain anomalies, etc. Phasing is a popular term for it. In essence, SCP-2460 is a collection of objects, asteroids, comets, nebula material, stellar mass, and more, all phasing through each other. 
It's important to recognize that this phasing is the sole reason all these objects exist in the same place at the same time. This is not a spatiotemporal distortion, at least not anything more than is fully and non-anomalously explainable via its gravity alone. However, what is less explainable is the lack of electromagnetic interaction within SCP-2460. Firstly, this means that there is no radio communication possible with anything within the anomaly. Radio waves pass through it as if it weren't there. This is also what leads to the phasing effect we see. You know how we are made of atoms, and atoms consist of a nucleus surrounded by an electron cloud? These electron clouds are negatively charged and push each other away, and that's why we can't walk through walls. But within SCP-2460, the electron fields between objects introduced at separate times don't interact, don't push against each other, and as a result, don't stop objects from passing through one another. But wait, you're probably asking, isn't the photon the gauge boson for the electromagnetic interaction? Why do we see anything? Okay, you're likely not asking that, but I did. First thing. The truth is, we don't see most of SCP-2460. Experiment 2460-B proved that. We saw the medium density around probe OU11-3 increase nearly a thousand-fold before losing contact. There is a cloud of massive particles that have nearly no interaction with normal matter extending as far as 5 kilometers from the central mass. There are only two ways these particles interact, gravitationally and rendering normal matter that comes in contact with it out of phase. These particles are invisible and otherwise undetectable, all remaining mass added subsequently acting as an anchor for the particles. That's why we can see the massive objects in the center. What's the risk from this? Well, it is exceptionally dense, and thus perturbations from its present orbit will preferentially cause the orbit to decay, resulting in SCP-2460 falling to Earth. Now, since it remains phased out, collision with the Earth won't cause any impact crater. However, the quantum spin annihilation will affect all matter the anomaly passes through, resulting in invisible holes of phased out ground. SCP-2460 will pass unhindered through the center of the Earth, transforming matter the entire way, leaving a giant hole through the center of the Earth that the liquid mantle and core will gush into, the crust and surface eventually falling, unsupported, into the hole. But it won't end there. The momentum in SCP-2460 will propel it all the way back out of the center of the Earth, back to the surface, where it will gravitationally oscillate back and forth, back and forth, rendering more and more of the Earth out of phase with itself, like Swiss cheese, until the entire planet collapses into a central, super-dense pile of untouchable rubble, constituting a QK-class quantum degeneracy end-of-the-world scenario. So, I'm sure you can agree that we want this thing as far away from us as possible. The problem is, we can't touch it. We can't use thrusters to push it away. There's nothing to push against. We can't deflect it with magnetic fields, there's no electromagnetic interaction, we can only use gravity to pull it away. That means we'll need to tow an asteroid of similar mass into low Earth orbit to carefully slingshot the anomaly away from us, then destroy the asteroid somehow. An asteroid approximately 22 kilometers in diameter should contain enough mass to eject the anomaly. Recommendations have been submitted to O5 Command. But I'm sure you actually are all asking, what is this? Why did it end up here? orbiting around the Earth. Well, it is an amalgamation of weakly interacting massive particles, invisible to electromagnetic radiation, emitting no radiation of its own, and possessing only gravity. In short, ladies and gentlemen, SCP-2460 is dark matter. And when you consider that fully 85% of the mass in the universe is dark matter, we should not ask why we are so unlucky to have a chunk of it orbiting around the Earth. We should ask why we are so lucky that we haven't hit any of this stuff yet. Thank you, and good evening. End log.